But I will tell you that premarital agreements are not only for the uber wealthy. 99.9% .9 of the time, there's a lot of emotion to deal with. Hey, welcome back to my channel, Attorney Brooke. I'm popping up for you guys that subscribe button. Hit that button now and you can kind of like stay in tune with all my videos and what's popping out next. But this video, I wanted to talk about prenups and they're also referred to premarital agreements, marital agreements. If you sign something after you get married, it can be a postnuptial agreement. So the underlying kind of like big picture is that you can sign an, a marital agreement prior to getting married or after the date that you get married, you know, prior to any sort of divorce. I just wanted to chat about why you would want to sign an agreement who should sign an agreement, things like that. Just like my general thoughts. It is important to understand you guys that although I am a family law attorney and I talk about family law topics, this is not to be construed as any sort of advice that's like particular to one individual. This is just my general thoughts. This is not something advice that can be relied on. If you need specific advice for your specific issue or family law issue, you should absolutely seek a consultation with a local attorney. And I'll leave leave it at that. So just jumping into it, most times I feel as though the general population feels that premarital agreements are only meant for the rich or for the uber wealthy. If you're coming into a marriage with a financial portfolio that's already established, like you're a celebrity, an athlete, you know, just someone that is, you know, or generational wealth, something like that. And that in the event of a divorce, you don't want that, those assets to be subject to division for that, to that spouse. Then they sign a premarital agreement. And that is absolutely true. And most of the times that's the outlet in which wealthy people find that protection. But I will tell you that premarital agreements are not only for the uber wealthy. They can absolutely serve as a outlet or kind of a precursor type situation for people that aren't necessarily considered wealthy. That's because the scope of a premarital agreement can cover so many things. It can cover what assets you already have coming into the marriage. It can talk about how we divide assets that are acquired during the marriage. So that could be if you buy a home together, if you buy cars together, a boat together, you invest together, you're generating and accumulating like a 401k or retirement together. It dictates how all of those assets are to be valued, awarded, or distributed in the event of divorce. There's along with that, you can you generally contract around like how children are going to be dealt with or how ex household expenses are going to be dealt with or how debts are going to be dealt with how i mean in the event of divorce during the pendency of your divorce case who's going to live where who has to pay what support and there's just if you're a business owner, we can dictate terms regarding your business. There's just a plethora of things and the scope is so broad for a marital agreement that it can apply to generally anyone despite how much money they have accumulated prior to the marriage. If you think that you wouldn't benefit from a marital agreement, that is not necessarily true. I think a marital agreement can seem slightly unromantic and I know there's a lot of people out there that vehemently disagree with them and would say, if my if my future spouse ever came to me with an, a, an agreement said I had to sign it or I'm not gonna marry you, it would be no, you're not the person for me. And that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with having that ideology. But then there's also times when I think that it can be good because a premarital agreement forces couples to answer questions that they might not even have asked themselves yet. And I find that to be extremely common when I have clients in which I'm drafting premarital agreements for. I will pose questions about X, Y, Z, the property, the children, this, that, if you, you know, all kinds of things. And they're like, well, I don't even know. And so it's like, how do you expect me as your attorney to draft you something about 
the outcome of your life, of your marriage, if you haven't even talked about that yet with your significant other. So that's why I think premarital agreements can be good because it can be a form of like divulging some of those like deeper, more serious conversations and being conscious of those questions and also what the intent or answers are gonna be to them later on in the development of your marriage. So that's why I think they can be beneficial as well is to really air out some of those foundational issues in every single marriage and how you're going to overcome or work through those things. So as I was saying, like marital agreements can sometimes be unromantic in that sense, because while you're planning a wedding and this and that, like it's, you know, roses and daisies and we're happy and we're in love and like everything should be that way. And that's like amazing. So it can be unromantic. It can be like very not sexy in a way, but it definitely helps to establish what the intent and the roles and the expectations of each spouse is going into that marriage. And it really helps you to establish that foundation, which I think is important. Also, it can help to alleviate a lot of the stress and the emotion on the back end. I think people that draft premarital agreements, couples that do, aren't doing it with the intent that we're gonna get divorced. That's, and I think that's a big misconception that people have when it comes to premarital agreements is that like obviously we're talking about divorce before we're even married like why what you're the wrong person for me that's not necessarily true i think sometimes when you have talked about the division of property or the care of the children and things like that and it's already contracted for and it's already established in a written document it can save a lot of pain and stress and emotion on the back end in the event that you do have to proceed with a divorce or you do have to file for one i can tell you you 99 out of 100 times every single client I've ever worked with they say that my spouse like they used to be my best friend they were my person they're the parent of my children they're just not who I thought they were a different side of a person comes out during a divorce 99.9% .9 of the time there's a lot of emotion to deal with it's you know a life-changing event that we have to help navigate people through so there's like that level of emotion and you change and you start so Someone that once was your best friend, your confidant, your ride or die, no longer is, and they're your number one like combative. And so that's very hard, I'm sure, psychologically and emotionally to have to deal with. So having a prenup that has already established what it is that we need to do without getting a court overly involved can also play a significant role in like a clean cut from a marriage. So yeah, those are some of like the overarching just benefits of entering into an agreement. It's not only for the uber wealthy, it can help to establish the scope of your, your marriage. It can help to pose questions that you might not have asked your future spouse and force you to discuss those answers. And it can also help to alleviate a lot of that stress, time, money, resources, and emotional turmoil on the back end in the event that we actually do have to use this prenup. So that was a little bit of my family law rant about prenups. I know there's a lot of talk. We hear about it a lot in the mainstream, but just to dive in and give everyone a bit more information about it, a little bit more know-how was kind of the goal of this video. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you like what I'm putting out and you want to see more of it, you want to hear more about the legal world and that, that aspect of my life, hit that subscribe button and I will catch you guys next time. Bye.